This afternoon I'm reading from The Christian Archetype, a Jungian commentary on the life of Christ by Edward F. Edinger. I'll be reading chapter 9, Flagellation and Mocking. The divine process of change manifests itself to our human understanding as punishment, torment, death, and transfiguration. This is from an essay of Dr. Jung's called The Visions of Zosimos, Alchemical Studies, Collected Works 13, paragraph 139. This is figure 18, The Flagellation of Christ, The Hours of Catherine of Cleves. Scripture reads, Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him, John 19, 1. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers, and they stripped him and put him in a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after that they had mocked him, they took the robe off from him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. Matthew 27, 27 to 31. These events express utter degradation of the ego. Torture and humiliation belong to the mortificatio phase of individuation. The experience of the self is always a defeat for the ego. The ego must be relativized to make room for the self. The totality of the self brings with it the shadow, encounter with which is always a painful humiliation. Only a day or two earlier, Christ had chastised the money changers in the temple. Now that chastisement is fed back to him. Now that chastisement is fed back on him many fold. Christ's physical and psychological torture, which culminated in the crucifixion, has a parallel in this description of the suffering servant of Yahweh in Isaiah 53. Quote, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our grief and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our inequities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Verses 3 to 5. By this knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their inequities. Verse 11. That's from Isaiah 53. The suffering servant of Yahweh can be understood as a personification of the redeeming nature of consciousness of wholeness. It has nothing to do with meekly turning the other cheek, but rather refers to the fact that the individuated ego can endure the onslaught of the power principle without identifying with it, that is, without succumbing to either defensive violence or despair. The consequence is a gradual transformation of the collective psyche. By this knowledge, consciousness, shall my righteous servant justify many. In this way, writes Jung, was world-conquering Caesarean transformed into spiritual kingship. And that's the end of chapter 9.